Hi friends! So today I thought we could go over my 2021 reading journal and bullet journal. So let's start with the reading journal. So I have this decorated with stickers that I got off of Etsy and Redbubble. And to begin, this year's theme for the primary pages, I decided to go with fairy tales. So the font that you're going to see throughout this bullet journal is Amador, which is an Adobe font. It was very difficult to replicate <laughs> and took a lot of time, but I think that it ended up being worth it. And as for tools that I used, I thought we could go over that quickly. So I used the Sakura Jelly Roll pens a lot throughout this entire layout. I rely a lot on the metallic ones. I love them a lot. I also used the Stardust line and the white ones. For any sort of fine lining, I use the Pigma Micron in the 005 and 01. I personally really, really love fine lines and little details, so this is my favorite pen. I draft and sketch everything using a pencil and this is just a Stadler push pencil. And I also used pencil crayons in these layouts. I used the Stadler pencil crayons and the Gold Faber Faber-Castell pencil crayons. These Faber-Castell pencil crayons are absolutely amazing. They write like so buttery. I cannot recommend them enough. I'm in love. <laughs> and lastly, I did a bit of watercoloring. So I used the Koi watercolors and these are actually also metallic. I have an obsession with metallics, as you will soon see. I actually almost sold my watercolor sets because I wasn't using them very often, but then I ended up getting this urge to use them in the, these spreads because I thought that they would suit them very well. And overall, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. But anyways, for our title page, we have a pumpkin, and I had accidentally written 2020, so I had to cover that up with 2021. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but my theme for 2021, for at least the initial spreads, is fairy tales. So the first layouts are the new releases pages, and I plan on updating these on a monthly basis, just with the title of each book that I'm really looking forward to, as well as a space where I can put down the rating or if I DNF the book. I am a <laughs> notorious DNFer, so I always try to keep my most anticipated spreads to a minimum because I never know how many of them are going to be DNF'd. I always really just try to write down the ones that I really think I'm going to read. But anyways, if you do want a closer look at the books that I'm looking forward to most this year, please do let me know. I also made a mistake on this page and I wrote down the wrong ones, so I had to cover that up with a new piece of paper. And yeah, here is the, that font that I had mentioned previously. I think of everything in this bullet journal, writing out the font took the longest. I have no talent whatsoever in calligraphy, so I devoted way too much time to those. Okay. So these next two layouts are my goals page and my to reread page. So I thought we could go over the goals really quickly. I say really quickly, is it gonna be quickly? So in 2021, Haikyuu and Orisama Teacher are both going to be getting their final volume releases. They're already finished in Japan, but volume 45 and volume 29, I think it is are going to be released this year. So my plan is to finish both these series in 2021. I'm currently on volume 13 and volume nine. No spoilers, please. Another goal that I have for myself is to have 25% of my total reads be rereads. One of my current ongoing goals is to have my bookshelves be almost entirely reread. So I want almost every book on my shelves to have been read at least two times. I'm not that far along in the process, maybe about 20%. And then my next goal is to have at least 25% of the books that I read, not including manga, 
be by people of color, this number is actually pretty low because I have to account for all the rereads I'm going to do. I would also like for at least half of what I'm reading, not including manga, to be adult titles. I'd like to read at least 24 nonfiction novels. Another goal I have is to read at least one 800 plus page book. So my primary contender for this goal is to, oh, is to read Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman. It's quite a large book at, oh, at 855 pages. <laughs> I'm a little bit intimidated, but it's okay. I'd like to also keep up with my reviews this year. One of my goals is to be consistent with posting on my blog, on Goodreads, and on Instagram for reviews. And every time I post a review, I want to post on those three platforms simultaneously. We'll see how that goes. Another goal I have for myself this year is to get my unread manga collection down to 50% of the total collection. I actually really, really hate having a TBR. It really stresses me out, but the exception to this is actually with manga. With manga, I don't mind having a lot of volumes to read. It makes me happy. But I do think that my unread to read ratio isn't really great right now, so I would like to decrease it a bit. Another goal I have for myself is to purchase less than 50 books, including manga. This next goal is basically me just saying I would like to primarily read from the library. I did that a lot last year, so I think that should be okay. And this last goal is read previews within a month. And basically what that means is I want to keep track of upcoming releases regularly. The way I go about things is I will get previews of each book and I'll read them to see if I'm legitimately interested in them. And if I am, then I'll borrow them from the library or request them at the library. So I just wanna be able to keep track of that really well. I don't have it listed, but I would also really like to catch up with Horimiya Mia and finish Blank Canvas this year. Blank Canvas, I only have two more volumes, so that should be okay. Horimiya, Mia, I'm on volume eight and there's about 14 volumes, so I think this should be okay too. So instead of having a to read list, I have a to reread list because I am absolutely garbage at keeping up with TBRs because I like to DNF books a lot. But another reason why I have a to reread list instead of a TBR is because my actual TBR isn't very large. For the most part, I read books from the library or I'll read a book as soon as I get it. The only books on my TBR right now, if we're not including manga, are The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutowski. And I'm actually saving this for when the sequel comes out, then I can read them closer together. And Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi, same story. I'm just waiting for the last book to at least get a release date before I reread the first one and then read this one. And the other book, which I already showed you, Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman. So yeah, my TBR really is very small, just the way I like it. Anyways, for my two reread list, I'm going to list them off, but not in order, just in order of how I have them stacked beside me. So first is A List of Cages by Robin Rowe. I really love this book. It's about a boy in foster care. The Story Girl by Ellen Montgomery. I am meant to reread this last year, but I didn't get around to it. It's like really, really close between this and Anne of Green Gables for my favorite Ellen Montgomery novels. I think Story Girl is better written, but Anne has better characters, I don't know. I'm also planning on rereading a couple of romance novels. The first being The Score by L. Kennedy, as well as well Met by Jen DeLuca. I reread the sequel to this last year and I didn't love it. So now I'm a little bit hesitant going into this. And lastly, The Bride Bet by Helen Huang. Same story, I reread The Kiss Quotient last year and I didn't like it as much. So now I'm a bit hesitant about rereading romance novels. I just feel like they don't have as much reread value for me. Which isn't to say that I don't like romance novels. Romance manga in particular is one of my biggest weaknesses. So I just find it really weird that so far rereading romance novels hasn't been very successful for me. I'm also going to, well, I am rereading The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. This is the last book in the Remnant Chronicles. Really enjoying this so far. 
I also want to reread Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I also meant to reread this last year. And then I have a couple different sci-fi on my list. I want to reread Fahrenheit 451. It's been a long time since I read this. As well as the Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asimov. Again, it's been a really long time since I read this. This is a bind up of the three novels. And the last two sci-fi on this list are Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I'm really worried about this one. I'm not sure I'm going to still like it. And The Knife of Letting Go by Patrick Ness. I've changed a lot as a reader over the past three or four years. And so it always really surprises me when I reread something and that, that I used to love and then I don't like it. But anyways, I'm also planning on rereading Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik is my favorite novel ever, so I'm looking forward to this. And lastly on my to reread list is Homegoing by Yeah Jessie. So the list is pretty hefty, but I think I can get through it. I tend to read between 150 to 200 novels a year, so that should be fine. Okay, my next spread is my red spread. So here I'm going to color in all the spines and write the titles of the books that I read. I try to stick with the fairy tale theme by incorporating little fairy tale elements such as a mouse, a glass slipper, a potion bottle. This I'm going to color red. It's an apple. I just ordered some more metallic jelly roll pens and so I want to save that for when I get them. I have some gold coins. Then we have a genie lamp, a peach, a candlestick. <laughs> I felt really weird about drawing a candlestick on a bookshelf, but whatever, we're just gonna ignore that. And a moon. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this fills out. The first book I read this year was A Promised Land by Barack Obama, and I really enjoyed it, so I'd highly recommend that. My next page is my book haul page. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to draw a dragon around the word haul, and I had drawn the dragon after coloring in haul in gold and these pens are actually very unforgiving when it comes to drawing over top of them with things like pencil crayon or paint so i kind of regret being really quick to fill it in because then i could have added more detail on the dragon but it's fine this gold here is painted using the watercolor set i showed earlier <laughs> and then we have a little bit of bleeding from the next page which you will soon see so this next page is the unhaul page and again I decided I wanted to draw a dragon. I initially did not like how this turned out at all but now it's kind of growing on me. That was painted with the watercolor set again and then I have a page for the books that my husband has read or is going to read. He doesn't keep track of it so I like to keep track of it for him. And on his page I've just drawn some vines and a harp. Can you tell it's a harp? I think it looks like one of those birds that drinks water. I'm going to insert a picture here. But yeah, as long as you guys think it's a harp, I'm happy. And then the next couple pages are my January spread. So traditionally, I like to have my bullet journals have bookish themes. I didn't do that in my life journal, as you will see. But for January, my theme was the Wayfarers series, in particular, A Record of a Space Barn View by Becky Chambers. I tried to do a similar font and stuck with the same color scheme minus the yellow. So the first page is my red spread. And again, I used the watercolors to get this effect. I have mixed feelings about how this turned out, but it's fine. And here I'm just going to write the books that I read as well as the star rating. And then lastly, we have the stats page. And here I've separated my book statistics and my manga statistics. I read a lot of manga last year and I didn't separate the stats and I kind of regret it. So this year I've made a point to do that. And the types of things I'm going to be keeping track of are number of books read, number of pages read, number of DNFs, as well as number of pages read for the DNFs, my average rating per month, whether or not the book was published in 2021, whether or not it's the first time I'm reading it, if it's a new to me author, if it's by a person of color, the gender of the author, as well as the demographics, younger reader, young adult, new adult, and adult. And then I've left some space for the different genres I read. 
I'd like to think that I read pretty diversely when it comes to genres, so I've left a decent amount of space there. I'll also be keeping track of the format of the books that I read, so if I own it, if it's a physical book, an audiobook, an ebook, if I got it from the library, if it's a review book, or if I got it from a subscription service like Audible or Shonen Jump, etc. And then I also wanted to include my most surprising book of the month, my favorite book of the month, the worst book of the month, and my most disappointing read of the month. I just wrote sad because disappointing is too long. And then again, similarly for manga, I have number of volumes read, pages, average rating, whether it's the first time I've read it, the gender of the author as well as illustrator, the demographics. I wasn't going to include demographics, but I did for the books, so here they are for the manga as well. All I have to say is if you are limiting yourself to a couple of demographics when it comes to manga, then I feel like you are really missing out. Also have space for genres, and then again, the format of the volume that I'm reading and most surprising, etc. And then on the bottom, I'll do the total for books and manga. And then the next couple of pages I have set out for my thoughts on the books that I'm reading that month. So anyways, if you would like to see my spreads for the next upcoming months, please do let me know. Or if you'd like an update on <laughs> my January reads, let me know and I will try to do that for you. So the next journal that we have is my life journal. So in order to maximize space, I decided to do my life journal and my reading journal in two different books this year. And this is an Archer and Olive journal. So I think this is a pretty unpopular opinion, but I don't actually love the Archer and Olive journals. The first time I placed an order, I bought three of them. I bought this one and then the one I used last year as well as the black journal and I just find that they don't hold up very well like I don't know if I'm really brutal with my journals or what but I find that they rip a lot also my biggest complaint with these and like this is the number one thing that bothers me even more than the fact that they're coming apart a bit is that the bullets don't always align perfectly so if you're making a spread that goes across two pages and you happen to do it on a page where they don't align, it just gets really, really annoying. So yeah, I wouldn't actually recommend these. But anyways, so my life journal for this year is going to be BT21 themed. I'm very much looking forward to it because I find that I really enjoy drawing these characters. For my title page, I just have the BT21 characters hanging off of 2021. And then nextly, I, nextly, and then next I have my future logs. So here I'm just writing important dates and I have Tata, Chimmy, and Shiki. And for these, I just cut out some black construction paper and then I wrote out the first letter of each month using the Moonlight gel pens and then writing over top of it with the white gel pens. And this is the theme throughout the first initial spreads is this black construction paper with the BT21 characters. So here is the next six months and we have Koya and Cookie. And then we have my goals and my highlights page. And then I'm going to skip over the next spread because it's my daily routine spread and I'd rather just not share that. But anyways. That is it for the initial spreads. I kept it really, really simple. I'm pretty bad at keeping up with bullet journals, so I figure if I keep things really minimalistic this year, maybe I'll be more on track of things. So then we get into the January spreads, and I think that these ones are a lot of fun. Each month, I like to pick two colors to go along with my theme, and this month, the colors are blue and copper. So these are the primary pens that I'll be using, as well as more pencil crayons, except not in green and brown. I just don't have the brown ones out. But anyways, this theme is actually Yoongi X BT21 themed. Yoongi is my bias. So I decided for the first month of the year, I wanted it to somehow incorporate Yoongi. 
So here is my January title page, and <laughs> we have Yugi in Chimney costume. And then I have the calendar as well as my tracker. So the way I keep track of things is tasks that I complete, I do in the metallic pen, and tasks that I don't, I do in a Stadler fine liner. I really like these fine liners. They are definitely important in my collection. And all the headers that you see are going to be colored in using a Crayola Super Tips. But anyways, so now we have this week and I messed up a bit. And this was supposed to have 10 blocks, but for some reason I counted nine. So I have the weekend grouped together. And then I have Yungi in a RJ costume in the corner here. For week two, I have Cookie and Yungi. I just think this is so funny. I, I don't know why. And then I have Yungi with Koya and Mong. And then lastly, I have Yungi and Tata. And I drew all of these myself. <laughs> Some of them turned out better than others. I feel like I was really starting to get the hang of it during this spread and this spread. But yeah, initially I had this entire part colored in blue and then I had drawn Yungi and Tata using the white gel pen. But I just find that this writes really thick and even the 05 size is a little bit too thick for my liking. Like I said before, I really like fine details. So I ended up just redrawing this using the fine liner and I think it turned out okay. <laughs> I'm not like super happy with it, but it's fine. But yeah, I like this layout because it's quite different from the preceding layouts. But yeah, anyways, that's it for my life bullet journal. If you'd like to see me draw out the next few months, do let me know. I do have them planned out. I think next month is going to be Koya. But anyways, that's it for today. I hope you guys are having a super, super lovely day or have had a super, super lovely day. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.